I now call upon Dr. Meena Lakshmipathy for her talk on antibiotic therapy in conjunctivitis. How much, how long? Thank you, Dr. Anil and KSOS for having me. I am Meena Lakshmipathy and I'm going to talk uh, some details of antibiotic therapy in bacterial conjunctivitis, how much and how long. Conjunctivitis is a worldwide problem and is the commonest cause of self-referral to the primary care physician and the ophthalmologist. Although not blinding, it can cause some amount of morbidity. It usually affects 135 people in 10,000, which is the only known incidence from the US. It's contracted from the other infected patients and from adnexal infected ocular areas. The modes of transmission are predominantly fomites and very rarely oculogenital. Predisposing factors are trivial, but in those rare cases which are uh, uh, either uh, recurrent or chronic, it could be because of underlying dry eye, epithelial aberrations, underlying systemic conditions, and presence of any ocular adnexal infected tissue. There is mild amount of symptomology like pain, photophobia, and decreased vision, but predominantly bacterial conjunctivitis presents with either a purulent or a mucopurulent discharge. Differentiating from viral etiology is important. These patients are usually a little older. They present with not much of preauricular lymphadenopathy, but they predominantly present with matting of the lids. These are classified as either acute when the signs and symptoms present within two weeks or hyperacute when this is a special category of acute etiology, which is, which is caused by the Neisseria species, or chronic when the symptomology is more than four weeks. Predominantly conjunctivitis is viral, but in 20% of the cases, which is of bacterial etiology, the most common etiological agents are the Staphylococcus, the Haemophilus, the Streptococcus pneumonia, and the Moraxella. This is a gentleman who presented to me with a one week duration of severe discharge and mild symptoms of one week duration. He was 60 years and he had an underlying diabetes condition. At the time of presentation, he had stopped using his contact lens and reported that prior to developing this redness, he had used the contact lens solution, which was a little uh, uh, outdated. He, pre he presented to us with severe discharge and we did a smear and uh, culture for this condition because it looked very uh, symptomatic. And uh, what, we, what we saw was there was gram-positive copper in the smears which, you, which cultured uh, methicillin-resistant staph epidermidis. We treated this gentleman with fortified cefazolin as he was already using gatifloxacin and had not improved significantly. We also made it a point to ask him to stop using the contact lens, get his diabetes under control, and to change the contact lens solution after, uh, after a while. Since he had recently recovered from a urinary tract infection, we also treated him systemically with oral doxycycline, uh, 100 milligram twice a day for one week and referred him to the physician as well. So when do you suspect bacterial conjunctivitis? The critical sign is the presence of mucopurulent or a purulent discharge. Purulent discharge is more severe where there is significant matting of the lids because of pure pus and mucopurulent when there is some amount of mucus adherent to it, this is of less severe symptomology. There's usually absence of preauricular lymphadenopathy, but certain cases of Neisseria and Moraxella seem to produce some amount of lymphadenopathy. The predictors of bacterial conjunctivitis are if there is a presence of bilateral matting, there's lack of itching, which is usually significant of allergic conjunctivitis, and these are usually not very recurrent. They have a shorter incubation period than viral conjunctivitis, and also the period of communica uh, communication is also shorter. If the patient is using a contact lens where it's important to ask the patient to stop continuing to use the contact lens. So when do you think that the when the patient is not improving within one week, the patient develops symptoms, uh, which is usually uh, visual loss, severe purulent discharge, increasing pain, and you see the presence of scarring and there's lack of response to the routine antibiotics, and they keep having this recurrence of symptoms. And uh, the gray or the, the red flags here is the presence of photophobia, which could indicate the patient is developing keratitis. And if the patient is using contact lenses, another red flag because it could cause, uh, again, contact lens keratitis in these people. Coming to the antibiotics of choice, the preferred practice patterns by the American Academy of Ophthalmology 2018 said that there is no superiority of one antibiotic over the other. Generally, third and the fourth generation fluoroquinolones are given for a B. The major uh, uh, treatment protocol seemed to be of uh, adjuvant therapy in the form of hand wash, preventing the fomites uh, transfer, 
and the ocular hygiene in the form of uh, uh, saline wash or uh, uh, removing the discharge. It is found that the bacterial conjunctivitis treatment with antibiotic is more effective when there is culture proven cases. And they also found that there is no role of systemic antibiotics. The potential benefits of uh, topical antibiotics seem to last for those patients who are symptomatic for less than eight to 10 days. Different antibiotics or whichever antibiotic use do not seem to cause any great benefit or harm. In the form of dosing, they also found that a standard dosing, which is more frequent than one drop three times a day, uh, had no potential benefit or harm. So when it co coming to the highest level of evidence present in bacterial conjunctivitis, the Cochrane meta-analysis of 2009 showed that since bacter that bacterial conjunctivitis seemed to be a self-limiting condition, which usually resolves with within two to five days. And they found that bacterial conjunctivitis versus a placebo was equally effective either you, if you treat it with a placebo or with an antibiotic. The problem here is there's no clinical algorithm, uh, uh, which is very, very useful. The patient expects an antibiotics and the physician access to what current level of uh, treatment exists is also lacking. The Cochrane meta-analysis of 2012 showed that there, there was clinical resolution along with microbiological resolution in patients who presented with bacterial conjunctivitis two to five days or six to 10 days after, uh, uh, after the uh, presence of the symptoms. So there was a potential benefit of treating these patients with an antibiotic for a short duration, but they cautioned against those bacterial conjunctivitis caused by streptococcus pneumoniae, Neisseria gonorrhea, and Haemophilus influenza. Predominantly, these are monobacterial conditions, and only one in five are caused by polymicrobial, con uh, polymicrobial conditions. So there seems to be a faster cure with the presence of topical antibiotics, so there will be less morbidity. There could be less transmission because you're killing the bacteria and the ocular flora, but it's important to remember that it is for low frequency and it is not tapered. The topical agents of choice will be governed by what is available for the physician to use and what is available for the patients to buy and what is the uh, any, any underlying risk factors for any complications. Fluoroquinolones are largely well available. The second, third, and the fourth generations are still present out, out of the shelf. So I've listed here the presence of the fluoroquinolones. Aminoglycosides are, are also effective, but when used in high frequency can cause ocular toxicity. Macrolides are predominantly bacteriostatic and they're used for little more frequency and for a longer duration of time. The other antibiotics which are common, which have been used are the povidonidine and the neosporin eye ointment. The rest are, I think, very available, very sparsely nowadays. The disadvantages of using uh, antibiotics has been shown by many studies, including the TRUST, the TSN and the Arcane study, which showed that there is an increasing macrolide and fluoroquinolone resistance. Generally, the second and the third generation fluoroquinolone have more resistance to gram-positive cocci nowadays. Very rarely, there could be allergies to these medications. There could be toxicity and, and a very rare plausibility of chloramphenicol-induced aplastic anemia. There's a photograph here to show the presence of uh, uh, the toxicity because of aminoglycosides where the inferior palpebral conjunctiva is, is injected uh, red and whereas the superior bulbar conjunctiva is predominantly Paper. Coming to spe special situations, those conditions which are caused by MRSA, that is methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus conjunctivitis, are usually treated by fortified vancomycin. Chlamydal conjunctivitis caused by the serovar P2K are uh, uh, seen as a sexually transmitted disease in, in neonates and in adults, which are unilateral and uh, uh, also have genital infections. This severe mucopurulent discharge and lymphadenopathy. These patients are treated with azithromycin one gram per day. And also, uh, they, uh, if azithromycin is not given, 100 milligram doxycycline for a week or erythromycin 500 milligram four times a day for one week. There's no evidence that topical therapy helps. It's important to screen the partners and send the child for pediatrician evaluation. As I already told you, one in five of the conditions are because of polymicrobial. In the polymicrobial conditions, the predominant bacteria which causes infections are a group of Staphylococcus aureus, Haemophilus influenza, and Staphylococcus epidermidis. This study also showed that polymicrobial infections have a predisposition of having an underlying viral conditions as well. 
coming to the role of steroids there is a very limited role of uh, topical uh, steroids topical steroids are seen to be available to a patient either in the form of plain steroid steroid antibiotic drops or steroid antibiotic ointments it's best avoided because it can potentiate an infection it can cause underlying viral reactivation most importantly in the abuse of steroids can cause steroid induced glaucoma and cataract and also because in uh, if it's if it's associated with an antibiotic or present with an antibiotic combination can potentiate the resistance by uh, if the patient uses it continuously if at all it is being prescribed it should be used for less than 2 weeks these are the fda approved drugs which i have mentioned on the left side on the right side you will see the frequency of the topical medications it's important to note that these are usually preferred to be dosed less frequent uh, uh, frequently as only as much as four times and that too for less than a week most of these drops are stopped within one week there has been some interest in the use of povidone iodine and this study which was published in ajo 2020 showed that there was no clinical significant role of povidone iodine in the dose of 0.6% with dexamethasone 0.1% uh, versus a placebo so as of now although povidone iodine has been used for viral conjunctivitis for bacterial conjunctivitis it's still uh, not very reliable so the take home message is you have to identify the clinical features and differentiate viral allergic and bacterial topical antibiotics are to be used for a short course and not to be tapered topical steroids are best avoided adjuvant therapies are the mainstay of treatment these are hand hygiene hand wash ocular hygiene and topical lubricants for comfort thank you so much yeah thank you meena